So everybody, welcome. We're here with Jonathan Mark today. Um, Jonathan, you, first of all, I've known you for a while. Your yeah. work is amazing. Um, for those who don't know, he's a medium, uh, which means obviously you connect to those who have passed on and your work has included amazing work with law enforcement. And that's what we want to get into first today. I know you've worked, uh, you know, we can't say specific names, but you've right. worked with, you know, the F FBI in the past, mm -hmm. NYPD in the past. And uh, most recently, you've been working with uh, the, the Suffolk County uh, Homicide Department for yeah. the Gogo Beach murders. And you yourself are uh, a Long Island local. You, you've grown yeah. up there. So I'm sure you're very familiar with this case. So kind of tell us how that came about, like when they first reached out to you or what motivated you to reach out to them or how that even started? Yeah, so this all stemmed back from actually 2017. So I've been working with them with this case for like five, six years at this point. And what people don't know is there was two task force that were on this serial killer case. So there was the one that originally called me and how that happened, and I'll never forget it. Like, it was actually kind of crazy. Actually, where I'm sitting, I was sitting here with my parents having dinner, and I get a call. And it's like an unrestricted number. And, and at that time, I read and worked on a couple, like, um, I'd probably say smaller cases to help them. Mm -hmm. um, and I helped them turn a corner, and then they did their amazing work and solved it. So I built credibility before that. But when you're working with law enforcement and... Um, like there's different parts like NYPD, um, the people that I've read were extremely skeptical. I mean, like from the beginning, yeah. they were like, this is BS, like, you know, this isn't real. But then and when you see, I, that, the, they, you see that right on TV shows where they say, oh, we consulted a medium, but people don't, I think a lot of people don't know that that is actually happening in real life. Like that law enforcement is working with people who have talent, the talent that you have. That's, that's correct. And you know, a lot of times, and I think just because I'm more public than more like in the, in the space with it, but they use us or like ones that are, I'd probably say more credible because there's like, I'm sure, you know, I mean, like today being a medium clairvoyant psychic is like a cool thing to be now. Like everyone mm -hmm. thinks it's like a cool thing, but they do use us. And typically we're not their first resort. We're always their last. And I think people get that a little twisted. Like, we're never called in right away because, you know, in the beginning of the case, they call us when their back is against the wall and they're like, we need to keep this case open and to continue yeah. to like get, you know, more and more stuff. But so basically I was at this table and again, I did cases and I've proven myself for law enforcement yeah. and unrestricted number came and called and I typically don't pick it up. I picked it up and the guy told me his credentials and I knew of him from reading other law enforcement. I was basically prepped before that the possibility of me working on that case was like 50, 50. So I knew yeah. the person. So like, it wasn't too much of like a shock. Yeah. Um, and he literally, people don't understand is like when they call, they're like, we need right now, 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 like I can't go yeah. through the whole spiel of like your grandma and grandparents. Like, no, like they yeah. basically were like the person who's involved in this case is on the other line. You have 10 minutes and this mm -hmm. is what we want. And in 10 minutes, I had to pull out like crazy things. Yeah. Now, and so I'm just going to stop you for a second there. So yes. this is just on the phone, right? So yes. I know a lot of people assume that you have to be there with the person. So mm. you can do this on the phone or on a Zoom yeah. like this. Yeah. Yeah. So I do a lot of them now, you know. Uh, via zoom for a couple of reasons uh, you know my clientele now is, which i'm very thankful for is like all over the world it's like i can't really have people come or vice versa and now i'm trying to keep my private life like private so like i don't want like people that i don't know to come to my house and stuff and yeah. sit down and all that stuff but yeah i could do it uh zoom or on the on the phone but yes it was done on the phone i gave him 10 minutes and he goes okay hangs up like literally like Got no validation for anything. I didn't know what I was saying, if it was right, wrong, whatever. So a contact that was an NYPD sergeant, now he's retired, but he knew of this person. He calls me like a week later and goes, you're on the case. Like literally like that. He goes, you're on the case. So every so often. This is about five, six years ago now when this yeah. first, first yeah. yeah, it's a long time ago. So it started from then. And then I was consistent. So like the thing with them is I would get a call 
when a new like lead in the sense of the lead, they, they knew who it was the pretty much the entire time. And, you know, um, and I said that person's name, like in the beginning, but because the case, I don't, and people don't know this, but the case is so big that there's so many different avenues that it's your people will see, it's going to go down a bunch of different avenues. It's not, yes, a serial killer, which is horrible, but there's other things that are being tied into it, like sex rings, et cetera, like things like that. So I was talking about all of that stuff. So then each it, and, it, and it wasn't consistent. So I don't want people to think like I was on the call with them like every month. Like it really yeah. wasn't like that. It was more so anytime they got a new piece of anything, they would call me to see if everything lined up. They didn't tell me a single thing. Like they wouldn't tell me anything because they wanted yeah. to see if things lined up. So and fast for forward. For those who aren't okay. familiar with it, there were 18 murders at the time or that are part of this case, but there's four of those murders yeah. that the current you know, perpetrator is, is being tried for. And yeah. who knows, maybe we'll see what else progresses of that. Yeah. So there's, I think 11 bodies that kill go. I think there there's 11 to their knowledge and they're connecting others to him from South Carolina to Philly, to Vegas, to, to everywhere. All the way dating back to the eighties, like dating back all the way to the seventies and eighties. That's when they think things started. But, yeah. but anyway, so as years went on, um they couldn't get enough evidence so maybe they 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 took a pause like they took a pause on it they're like listen we're not gang too much we have enough stuff to keep certain people where they are and and everything like they 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 can't follow or pay someone unless they for sure have like substantial amount of evidence it seems yeah. from their perspective so then a task force switches because then they reopen the case like a couple of years ago uh, or yeah. I'll probably say like a year or two ago. So they, a new task force comes on. I get a call from the local police, the Suffolk police homicide, like, like the lead guy calls me again through the people that I've worked with. So yeah. it's kind of like um, all through word of mouth yep. from these people. Yeah, and then they, trust you, they know, and then they pass it on. Yep. Right. And then they, and, and they trust me and, you know, they trust the people who are and saying so full time. They already are pretty sure. And you're sure that it's, it's the guy Rex uh, who was yes. recently arrested in July, but they're yep. trying to build the case, the proof around it and kind of piece together exactly what happened. Yeah. So they're trying to get as much DNA evidence as they can to prove it. And they're also, there's, like I said, like people will see, and I don't want to be the one to say, but there's so many, there are so many other different things now that are going to be brought to light. So like there yeah. are so many different angles that were coming to them. So, um, Is there anything so then, you can tell us about those angles or not yet? Um, we don't want to get you in any trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, I guess there's like somewhat of like a like a corruption on like government sides of stuff. Like okay, that's, that's the most I could probably like like without no, like yeah. like divulging like too much. But um, yeah. so can you tell us who that initial reading was with that you did? Was it a with, victim or if they cancel a name? But like that 10 minute original call was it yeah, a victim's so, family was it a yeah it was someone like it was a victim's family member got it yeah it was a victim's family member but then what they would do to change things up is they would bring me um like a cop that was on a detective that was closely working on it things that people yeah. would know information about that were have been on it for years and years and yeah. years so they were trying to change it up in all different directions they weren't yeah. trying to give me just a victim, victim, victim's family, because at because what what happens is with those readings is it, it becomes more about closure, which is what it should be. So the reading becomes mm -hmm. like they're saying this, they're they're talking about things about themselves versus like when I'm reading like a law enforcement person who's been on the case, it's more factual things that are building up to like um like explain like the whole case and stuff. Yeah. But it so then the new task force comes I, and I basically said the same thing that I said from 2017 on I get a call like probably four days before their arrest was on tv being mm -hmm. like heads up um you know this is happening we've been pacing this person for okay. six to eight months because they found dna like a bunch okay. of dna um and it and then I'm sure people know this because this is now public but the daughter did 23 and me which made it a match so the daughter did the dna with everyone and the, they were pacing him in the city because he worked in Manhattan. He lived in Massapequa, but worked in Manhattan. And 
there's a he was eating pizza and he threw the crust out and uh undercover sprinted took the crust out because of his saliva and ran and then it became a dna match so like they were pacing him like that I mean, I gotta make a, of course, a New York joke. Pizza saves the day here. Yeah. Pizza saves the day. <laughs> yeah. And so now this guy, obviously, like, you know, the police knew, you knew, but there wasn't a lot of, like, you know, his family didn't know he was married, he had yeah. kids, the family had no idea what had happened, neighbors, friends, things like that. Um, and tell us kind of like, in, in case people haven't, been familiar with your work, right? Like yep. what does the, how do you get the information, right? Cause if you're reading a family member, you're like, oh, maybe they don't know what happened. Right. They weren't there, but the deceased person is who comes through and gives you kind of sets the scene or gives you details or information that then you can, you can take from, right? And that's how, how the messaging comes in. Yeah, so a lot of the cases that I do, they're the path, like the deceased or the loved ones that like kind of come through, what they'll do is they'll, they'll emphasize certain things for me. So like, they'll kind of paint the scene, but the, um, I'll give you an example of one. Um, I'm not going to say names, but there was a case in the United States I was working on and it was a, it was a double homicide and there was, so it, it, it took place, um, in a, I'm just going to say this, um, I guess in like a mechanic type of shop, whatever. Okay, and it's kind of automotive. Yeah, like an automotive spot where people were like, like someone ran yeah. like in like um, a mechanic shop. And so I was doing it and, and I kept saying this name and the person, and I said, this person's alive, obviously, but, but what they do is they'll tell me that the person's alive and they'll be like, this person's here, this is their name. And, they, and the person kept pressing it. And then I, I spoke to the family and the police and the police was like, he works there, but he claimed that he wasn't there. And I was like, no, he was there. And I, and, you know, for a while we were going back and forth, right? Like literally they mm -hmm. were like, we've, you know, interrogated him. We sat with him. We spoke to him. I mean, this guy is like, like his, like everything kind of checks out that he wasn't there. Well, I think because they eventually said that I said something like they didn't use my name. They said a medium that, or, you know, an outside entity that they used kept bringing up your name and they were talking. And then I guess he said, no, it freaked him out. And then a day later he goes, I was hiding. I can identify two of the people that killed. So oh, I don't know if people know, but the mechanic shops, they have tires that are kind of like stacked or did they, they have things. He was hiding in something and he witnessed the person, like the two people die, but he claimed he wasn't there. So like, he was afraid. Probably right. He's probably own. afraid in so many different yeah like so many different ways so like that's kind of what it is it's like when i get pulled yeah. in it's really to help them navigate like what's coming on but but the loved ones will come through and like emphasize typically one to two things that are pretty significant if they mm -hmm. missed it or they overlook something or whatever and now are there times that you don't even maybe know what it means like you're getting a message you might not really know what it means to the case but you just know hey, this is, they're trying to convey this, this is important, and you pass it on, maybe not even knowing how important it is or how big of a, a reveal it might be. Absolutely. There's times where I'm like, listen, I don't know what this means, but, mm -hmm. excuse me, but like keep this recording and I'll explain exactly what's coming through and I'll be like, I really don't know. And then they, like, I think people don't even understand this, but the police and everyone, they're amazing at like putting puzzle pieces together. Like I think a lot of times people think as they watch TV, cops are stupid and they're just brute people that, you know, enjoy like, like com confrontation. You can really say that about like an any profession with someone based on personality trait, I guess. But these people will take what I'm saying and they'll put the pieces together and they'll make it yeah. like what it's supposed to be like, Oh, like he said this and this and this, and they put it together. And yeah quite incredible and like I try to explain to people like with the Gilligo case I was a small piece to like a very large puzzle I yeah, wasn't yeah. like I don't want people to think that like I came in and I was like you know I'm here to so solve like, hey I solved the case no but no. you're you're pointing the you know police and, and detectives and professionals in in criminal justice to things that maybe they weren't aware of or maybe they overlooked or that right. they couldn't have known but you you can know because you've gotten it through you know through through the spiritual meet, you know, medium. Right. A hundred. And that's like exactly it. Yeah. And like, I, I just don't want people to think I'm like, you know, taking credit. Like that's not, I'm a small piece.
to a very large puzzle that I don't think people quite get like at now, all. Is there anything else that you want our audience to know about working on this case or about the, you know, the Gilgo Beach murders or what we can expect from, from here? So the one thing I, I, I will say is what you can kind of expect is that this case is going to go in a, in a lot of different ways in the sense of like, I think with serial killers, people kind of associate like, you know, there's trauma and then there was like this, but they went on a rampage and killed people. Like you watch these documentaries that kind of show it. Mm -hmm. This is going to expose a lot of like things that, yeah, he was doing this, but at the same time, it was parallel to things that were going on that, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be a lot. That's all I'm going to say. Like, it's going to be a lot. It's not just a, like, yes, a serial killer thing is horrible, but it's not just that there's going to be a lot yeah. of things. And I believe there was a movie actually that was made about or based on the Gilgo so uh, Beach murder. So yeah, I, I, can't, now, I didn't know this, but I know I saw it and I thought, oh my God, this was a true thing. And that was obviously before this arrest news came out. Um, yeah. So, you know, you work on a lot of a lot of high profile cases. And I know yeah. that, you know, earlier this year, you worked across the Gabby Petito case and yes. at the time really couldn't speak publicly about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even since, since then, like right now, you're still working uh, as they, you know, have criminal charges against the, you know, the families and yeah, yeah. Um, you're working with Gabby Petito's, you know, mother right now and reading her. Yeah. I'm not sure how much you could say about, about that, but yeah, um, sure. or anything you want to share about that case or even about, you know, how you can help bring closure to the mom and the families and, and kind of find, help them to find the truth of what was really happening here. Sure. So I was actually out, out to lunch with Nicole yesterday and she's back on Long Island, and I think she went back to Florida. But for a while, I couldn't talk about the case. Like, um, I got pulled onto it a little bit later on. And um, for a while, you know, I did publicly say it once in the beginning. And then there was people that were, like, kind of coming at me and being like, um, you know, the public was basically pretending to be detectives. And then there was people that were saying that they were mediums, clairvoyants, whatever, that they were on the case. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing because I fact checked them. I called the law enforcement because there was like four agencies that were on this one case. And I called my contact and I said, this person keeps DMing me and mm -hmm. saying this or like direct messaging me and stuff on it, or, yeah. and being like, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, who is this person? Like, they're like, no one is doing it. Cause like at that point, I was so invested in that case that they would tell me if they brought someone else in just so like we both can do something and see like what yeah. happens. So for a while, I, I, they asked me to stop speaking about it. They're like, you know what, just like chalk it up. Like you're doing, you know, which I do believe I'm doing like, you know, like very good work Forever. as far as like helping like spiritualness and all that stuff. And they're like, they're like stick with that. And just like, just know you're helping. So yeah. years. So like literally, a year or so goes by and I wasn't allowed to communicate with, with anyone from the family. And I get a text from someone and they gave her my number, Nicole. And now we talk all the time. You know, we, we just posted a picture cause I'm allowed to talk about it. So I posted it um, on my picture. I went out to lunch with her and her children and I took them out and it, you know, it's great. And we have the common thing like theme of just trying to help families now that she's Unfortunately, her daughter's case was made so public and it was such a large case. Now she all she wants to do is just help people. So I told her I'm on board to help her as much as I can. And, you know, just, just speaking to her, like, and then I, I gave her like a personal reading also, like too. And to see someone just smile and be like, you know, I, I spoke to this person to get that closure. It's like the best feeling in the world. Like I didn't have to give her didn't have to be like a case reading where I'm like giving her details. Like granted there was some things, but just for her to get that, like, oh, I spoke to Gabby, like that felt like she'll, she'll, she'll like text me all the time about it. Like, and she's amazing. She's such a good person, such a good person. Her I'm sure early on, like some of those case details helped to, you know, no, no parent can imagine losing a child, but in this, this way. And then the public became, in, in, you know, I was saying infatuated with this case. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the following of this case was at an, at another level. The media attention was at another it level. Um, and, you know, that's a lot for, you know, a mother or family or anyone to deal with. So I'm sure getting some of those answers from you, um, you know, because 
you have no skin in the game. You're just trying to help, right? Like that's, you're not. That's literally you know, not, all. Exactly. Yeah. You didn't know them before. You have no. So it's like that gives them some closure. But then also, like you said, getting that, getting to know like they're okay now or whatever yeah. message might be coming coming through because, you know, it's really hard for people to process. And I, and I think I want to, um, you know, obviously it's amazing the work you do with law enforcement and I'm sure you could go on and on, right. About yeah. hundreds of cases that you've worked on and, and uh, it's crazy. But I also think like, you know, a lot of the time your day to day is just helping people that reach out to you or that are referred to you and maybe they've lost people, you know, in a tragic way like that, yep. you know, a, you know, a tragic or, you know, legal way like this and some of them are just normal deaths maybe someone died of old age but they want answers right or Correct. whatever that may be you know um so tell us i guess a little bit about like how your clients come to you sure. how you decide i know you have a long wait list Thank now you. um i know yeah. you know you, you struggle to try to help everyone but you know there's only so many hours in a day and it takes a lot out of you to connect in that way so tell us how you kind of go through your process of like picking people to work with and what, what that looks like. Yeah. So, um, my day to day is like, you know, the typical readings. I mean, it just so happens that the ones that I've been doing, I think more so recently happened more on the tragic spectrum and, you know, all death is tragic, no matter how people paint it, whether you die at a hundred from old age or something else. Um, but so I, it, it all started from like word of mouth. And then I think when I started reading high profile people that are in the public eye and then they were posting about it and then doing all this stuff like that became, um, I think it brought me to like a different like level as far as like, you know, the public is the public and they take, you know, sometimes celebrities word as gospel sometimes. And I've learned that from doing you know, if someone says and they're a super fan of a celebrity that I've read, then, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter the, the like circumstance. But I think I also build myself up with the law enforcement stuff, too. So it just kind of grew. And I have a pretty long wait list, which I'm extremely thankful for. So how we kind of pick and choose is like my my mom does my appointment still, even though, you know, I have a whole team of people like you're mm -hmm. one of them, like, you know, um, kind of back in LA because you trust her to, to sift through that yeah. and prioritize that yeah like I have people reach out to me all the time about trying to take over like that list and I'm just like I, I you know my mom is like me and we want to help people and then I can tell when other people want to make it more business oriented and like that's not what I want and I want people to feel like this is like coming from because it is like my heart in a good spot yeah. so she'll go through like I'm telling you there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of emails and she'll try and get to the like she kind of like from what she told me recently closes her eyes and scrolls and then stops and then starts reading from a certain point because mm -hmm. it gets too difficult and I, I I think now what we're doing is we're trying to squeeze people in that need it but it's like and I'm again so thankful but it's just there, there's there's so many so we don't, yeah. like you said, like I can only do so many without me getting physically drained and mentally drained and everything. It's, yeah. it's a lot. Speak to that a little bit. Like, what does it take for you? Like, what is that process like for yeah. you when you, when you do a reading, if, you, so if you're, if you're happy to share? Of course. So like, I try to explain it like this to people because like, it's hard for me to even put it in words, but Imagine you're working out at the gym or exercising or whatever, but you're using a muscle that is so small and not really used often. So you, you have to build it up. And when you do it after a certain amount of time, you get drained, like your muscle, if you're working your arms, your biceps, your shoulders, and you do it over and over and over and over and over again. Yes. You build up muscle tolerance and memory, but you still drain yourself. And I just say, imagine using a part of your brain that you like don't really use often and you're going into it hard. Like you're going into it hard. And for me and for other mediums that are, I'm going to use the word legitimate. Um, you can't turn it off, but you can learn to ignore it. Like that's what you learn because if you don't ignore it, it'll like drain you. Like I, I sweat, like I wear sweatshirts. I mean, you know, when I do any type of like reading or podcast that involves that probably I wear a sweatshirt because 
I sweat so much when I do readings and I get horrible migraines. Like I went, I had an ocular migraine, which I found out after, but I went blind to my left eye for like an hour from doing too many. Like all of a sudden my left eye just saw like a bright prism and it just went over. It, it was, it was gnarly. It, it, it was I'm scary. I'm sure it's scary. And yeah, and that's the thing you have to also protect yourself and your health and also make sure you want to give people the best reading and experience that you can. So if you're just like anything else, if you're burnout or you're, you know, not there with it, like you don't want to do that. So I know you, that, that must be crazy because you have this huge wait list. Um, and I know, because I've checked you out, you have a ton of imposters, unfortunately. Like, I mean, when you log on to Instagram or TikTok or any of these platforms, there, there are a lot of people who have made accounts pretending to be you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's a real problem and yeah. something that I know you've had some, you know, frustration with too, because you don't want to see anyone get taken advantage of. And I don't know yeah. if you want to speak to that a little bit and yeah. And how yeah. So, I mean, you know, like, like you just said, I always vent to you about it. And, um, you know, I, I, one, I'm flattered that people want to do that, but you know, the flatter, like the flattery and all that goes away when you're, they're scamming people out of so much money. I mean, the amount of money, it's like, almost like, like recently, probably like recently, if I'm going the last like six months, probably like close to like 70 grand something like that. Like, so like the reason why it also bothers me is because these people are preying on these people's emotions. Like I would never, and I saying this, and I always say this, I would never reach out to someone being like, Hey, like, you know, mm -hmm. let's set up a reading and this is how you do it. Like or I, I never do that. And I've had that from, I've had other people on social media reach out to me and say, Hey, I was scrolling and I saw your photo and I have a message for you from your yeah. grandma or I have a, and it's like so bizarre, but people, sometimes they want, Oh, well, what, what if there is something, what if they know something, you know? So 100%. Yeah. they prey on people's emotions, which I, I personally think is like one of the most horrible things to do. So it's just a little frustrating. I mean, thank God for the verification on Instagram now. I mean, you know, I've been battling that and, you know, I do have like press and all that stuff, but now, now I, I have the blue check. Now the, the biggest problem from my perspective, even with Instagram, I mean, it still happens because people, they really want to speak to me or they really want to speak and hear about what that person, that imposter said, but it's TikTok now, like TikTok, I have over 50 fake accounts, probably more. Um, that I kind of stopped posting on it because I'm like, why I mean, am I? Gonna... I just joined TikTok recently. And as soon as I joined, I actually got a message from a fake you. And mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a second, I know you. So this, yeah. this is, yeah, so it's, it's crazy. So how do people, how do people find you, right? They're watching this video. They have a story. They want to reach out to you. They know there's a wait list, but they want to take their chance to see, Hey, maybe yeah. in the next few months I can chat to Jonathan. What's the best thing? Should they go to your website? Um, yeah, I would probably go to my website would, or if you go to my Instagram, it's, it has a verified blue check on it. And, and also to that point too, it's the same thing with TikTok. Like if you go to my actual main accounts, I mean, I have, I have like over a hundred, I have like 120,000 on TikTok, a hundred thousand here. So just be aware of like the follower count, the actual name. Mine's only Jonathan Mark medium. Like there's no missing letter there's no or underscore, two, or, yeah. Under, mm -hmm. yeah like but i would probably say the safest bet is just to go to my website because then you just click it and it gets sent an email right right to us you don't have to go through that stuff if you don't want yeah. to and so, to know that you never ask anyone to just you know dm never. you with a payment and things like that so never there's there's yeah. a whole like process that goes in because one we're not even at this point, unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, we're not taking on like new clients, but we have that wait list and stuff. And there's a whole process that goes on. Like you'll, my mom who has a separate email would reach out and the, like, there's just a whole process. I don't even want to say it because I'm afraid yeah. that they're going to take Someone this. And, yeah. yeah but there is a, I talk to Jonathan, mm -hmm. you're not going to get a weird DM from him. Right. Um, I do want to ask, because you mentioned it a little bit, the celebrity thing. Obviously, we're a celebrity news site, but we do no yes. gossip. That's our, our vibe. Um, are there any celebrities that you've read that you're allowed to say, hey, like, we've done some readings? Yeah. Um, 
or any, you know, I, I know you were, I think, pulled in around the tragic time of um, Bob Saget's yeah. passing to talk yeah. to his family. I just wanted to ask if there's any, you know, sure. celebrities that you, that you feel like make sense to just mention or, or anything, you know, that feedback you got from them. Sure. So Kanye West is a big one. Um, he was a yeah, inside his head. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And this was like before that. So like, this was like years yeah. and years. like, this was, this was before all this stuff happened. Um, I, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, yeah. So I read Bob Saget's best friend. His name's Mike Young. He opened for him. Um, he's an, he's a comedian. He did, um, his tribute at the comedy store for him yeah. when he passed. Um, Amanda Klutz, when she lost, um, her, her husband. Um, I read Jenna Dewan, you know, I read mm -hmm. Nicole or Snooki. I, I think, yeah, I think the thing I love about this is that, you know, you might see a picture or testimonial from them on your site, but it's not your focus. And I know you've said publicly yeah. in interviews before that you, you know, you're not opposed to reading a celebrity, but you're not looking to read a celebrity. You're looking to read whoever needs that closure, whether they happen to be a, a famous person or or they or they're not, you know. Right. But a lot of times, obviously, that has helped to legitimize and get that get that interest out there. So I know we can't say who, but you do have some news coming soon. Can we yes. can we tease that you might be having a a show with a certain celebrity soon? We won't say their name, but to stay tuned for that. Absolutely, there's something coming very soon, and it's going to be with a with a celebrity and our goals to help people. And I think people are really going to enjoy. It's going to be probably coming out in August. I would probably say like everything's going to be nice. It's going to be more real people, real families, real people, real families, a hundred percent. And of course we're going to throw in like in the midst of it, some like celebrity readings as well, but okay. those, yeah. But like those celebrity readings will have a tragic loss, like kind of like attached to them. It wouldn't be like um, reading someone who just wants it for a good time or a fun time because they heard it's a fun experience yeah. or like a cool experience it's going to be people yeah. that are actually in need of it so like that's what's cool about it. it's real people uh, sure. yeah like real situations like i'm bringing on i'll i'll tell one guest i'm bringing nicole petito on or nicole schmidt petito she's she's going to be one and then there's an nypd sergeant whose partner was killed on the line of fire when they were working together mm -hmm. so to give him closure to give him answers and things like that like real people real situations and then there's gonna be real families and it's it's gonna be amazing it's not gonna be like the long island medium show it's not gonna be like that it's gonna be it's it's gonna be awesome i'm like super excited about it we're super excited about it too it's so so exciting yes. um well that's great i'm trying to think if there's anything else i think um, I guess this one last question, I, and I think, you know, fans of you might know this, but right. when did you first realize you had this like gift and what was that experience yeah. like for you? You're a young guy now, so, and you've been doing this for a while. So, yeah. So when I was about six months old, my aunt Susan passed away. Um, I never really obviously got to meet her. I was only six months old. And when I was a kid, I would always say like, and Susie's here. And, you know, I'm sure like I, like, like I always say, but like really people and their families always have pictures of people. They always try to keep their names somewhat like involved and alive. And the way that she passed was extremely tragic. So it's like, it's always being spoken about, but it was Easter. I was probably about like three or four, like relatively around that time. And I'll never forget my grandfather, her, their, their father was sitting, my uh, grandpa and my mom's other sister was there and I walked up to them and I said, Susie's here and Sue's here. And they're like, Oh, that's cute. And then I go, and I kept talking about, she's squeezing and hugging like um, a den. I didn't say denim jacket, but I kept saying jean jacket. Like it was like, I kept pointing at someone's like pants and being like squeezing like the jacket. Right. Yeah. And my grandfather was like, what the hell is he talking about? Like, you know, like what, like this kid has an imagination, right? Like whatever. So my mom just turns white like a ghost and just like starts tearing up. And my grandfather's like, what do you like, like what's going on? Yeah. So it turned, yeah. So it turns out that, you know, my mom and uh, Susan were best friends. Um, they were sisters, obviously that was my mom's younger sister, but they were best friends. They lived together all throughout their twenties. When she was sick, they lived in the house with my parents. And um, so when 
the service was over and everyone was going to the cars to drive to the cemetery. Um, my mom walked back in because they used to steal clothes from each other. And there's this one particular jean jacket that they would steal from each other all of the time. So they, so when everyone left, my mom walked back in to say her final, I, essentially goodbye. But she put the jean jacket on her in the casket and no one knew because she wanted her to be warm when she was like put, you know, underground and stuff. And my mom never told anyone because my mom thought it was such it was such like an intimate private moment. She didn't want to share it with like my dad didn't know, like no one knew. So then when my mom validated what I said, my grandfather was like, what the hell? Like, you know, no one could wrap their head around like how I knew that specific detail. And then as I got older, it was just like more was coming through with for like different people and stuff. It was a little crazy. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. It must have been scary as a kid, but also now that, you know, and then realizing it and deciding to embrace that gift is such a special talent. And oh, thank you. Um, you know, I know that, you know, people always wonder, Oh, can you predict the future? Like, obviously, you know, you're, you're not predicting the future, but you're connecting with people on the other side who may have guidance, who may have advice, who may have, yep. um, and yep. so I guess we'll end, we'll end here, but one last thing I heard sure. you had a, uh, a big personal moment yourself, if you want to share it. I, and, I, uh, yes. So I just, uh, I got engaged on, on Saturday. I've Congratulations. been, uh, thank you. Thank you. I, um, it was, it was amazing. And we're trying, we, at first I didn't know if my fiance now wanted it to be public, but now I think I want people to know more about my life, like my private life, because that's what people are constantly asking about. They're, they're only seeing like the readings and the, the stuff like that. They're like, no, like we want to see like who you are day to day and who's in your life. So, yeah. So her name is Jess and we, um, yeah, we just got engaged. I, it's, it's, I'm still like a, a, absorbing it. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And now do you have messages that come through for you? Like, did you feel guided? And I mean, obviously everyone, you know, they fall in love. They know, they feel yeah. like they know there's a right time. They still feel afraid. Did you have anything that was kind of guiding you where you're like, <sighs> I have a sign that this is the right thing. I wish. Um, I wish. I, I can't re even read myself. But I, 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 wish. I was wondering if anything comes through for you to you. No, I wish. I I could get messages for everyone else, but not myself. I'm so like the way that it was a little me, frustrating, but also really interesting. Yeah. Yes, because I'm supposed to be helping other people. I'm not supposed to be helping myself. Yeah. Yeah. So like once I start trying to help myself and stuff, then it gets all yeah. wonky. So that's why I'm like super exciting news and how did, just we gotta ask how did she take it you know you're dating someone and then you're like by the way you know I'm a medium and I connect yeah to like, what, what, I'm sure that's an interesting conversation how did she obviously like she took it well since you guys are now you know well, happily, but what was that what was that like and have you ever I know you said you can turn things off but it's always kind of there have you ever had messages I'm sure, that come through for her that you're like do I, do I resist saying this because it's we're just dating and it's awkward or do I have to tell, you know? Well, I will say I'm this. Sure happens, too. <laughs> yeah, no, it happens to everyone. But with her in particular, when I told her, um, she didn't like really understand. And then she, not that she said to prove it, but she kind of wanted to, she's like, prove it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I said some things that like were, she never have spoken about to me, like things in her family that she has never I mean again this is in in the beginning when we we're dating so I don't even know this stuff about her and then yeah. she was hysterically crying and stuff and then she's like I believe you and because the because the things I said and the person who I spoke to she never mentioned them and the way things happened like she never mentioned it ever like yeah. never and again it was it was in the beginning so I wouldn't even have even yeah. known you different last known. name different everything like it yeah. wasn't like for the people that you know, I some people might get, get weirded out. They might be like, oh my God, this person can read my life or read my mind, but it's not like you can read your mind. You can read certain messages and it's, it's really cool that it, she embraced that. And she did. Yeah. It was very cool. It was very, very cool. Yeah. I'm sure every party you go to, people are like any, anything for me, anything. So that's gotta be oh a tough thing to balance God. sometimes. Yeah. Like I will say in the beginning, people did it too. And, um, you know, now I, again, I think it's because my name is out there more when I go out in public, people now come up to me and 
They're not like, oh, like blah, blah, blah. They're like, who's around me? What's around me? And things like that. So yeah. I get it everywhere I go from strangers to parties yeah. to barbecues. I'm like, I, that's why now I'm like, I'm staying hunkered down. No more of this <laughs> stuff anymore. I'm done. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, but I know what you're saying. Cause you want to help everyone, but it's a special gift. And we, re- we appreciate your time today, obviously. And uh, look, I think if people want to learn more, they, they can watch your socials and, and, yeah. and see your gift there. They're, we're excited for your new show and who Thank knows you. what's to come. Maybe at some point we'll see a book or anything like that about it. But we, we look forward to the future with uh, all the things you have to share. So thank you. Yeah. All about- today. Yes. Thank you for having me.